Hey dudes, welcome back to another episode of our Moss Men's Team podcast. You are about to listen to one of our prior team meetings. If you ever want to join one of our live sessions that we have every Monday and Friday, head over to romas.com. That's R-H-O-M-A-S dot com and put your email in and we will send you a live link every time we record. We generally record on Mondays and Fridays. So if you ever want to be on the actual podcast, if we bring men up all the time to talk about their goals, talk about their obstacles, etc., uh, head over to ramas.com. And then also, if you want to help support the channel grow and also have access to exclusive content, book reviews, extra whiteboard sessions, etc., and some coaching sessions, uh, head over to patreon.com and support us. We would love it. But if not, no biggie. Um, we'll see you on the live sessions. Later, dudes. Enjoy this podcast. We're live. We're back, dude. It's Friday. Friday, what's up, dude? Another cycle complete. Not much, man. Just was a a little busy bee before we started. I lost track of time. Was working. Oh, nice, man. What are you up to? Trying to finish this. Uh, I have this last logo therapy video basically done. I'm just adding. I actually had it last night to like the shippable quality, and I said, let me just baby this thing up. Mm. Let me just sing this thing a little lullaby before I put it to bed. So I'm gonna add just some extra touches at the end, and then uh, you know, finish it. Hell yeah, nice. So what's up, bros? What's going on, everybody? How's it? How's your resolution uh, for me looking? Because you're Good. you're a little tiny pixelated. I'm not sure if it, Dude, can the other guys see that. Yeah, how do I look? Do I look pixed? Because I okay. Because yeah, I, I usually use um, Firefox, and Firefox wasn't working for this app today. So hmm. I'll be sure to mention that. Yeah. Well, hey, Link's saying that uh, looks clear. Good. Cool. All right, dude. So I want to sh- I want to share the survey. I just learned this from Jordan Peterson. I'm going through his new or his most recent book. Um, I thought it was pretty great. He said, "Great players attract great mates." I really like that, and I think that could be you know uh, an intimate partner mate or uh, a teammate. Great players attract great mates. I liked that, and also he said. Um, even if it's in, or even if it's at a distance, doesn't mean it's not real. And then he mm-hmm. illustrates that, hey, if you know something's coming 10 years down the road, it doesn't make it any less real. So work on it now, if you know I for like sure that. it's coming. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Hell yeah. So how's the week going, buddy? Uh, good, man. I've just been getting a ton of stuff done. My body's like dead because I'm in multiple fitness challenges right now. So Ooh. that's been a... I'm in a push-up challenge, and I've been doing yoga a lot, and I'm in this, the uh, Apple Watch thing with you, which now that I know how it works, I'm so pissed that first day I didn't get all of my 600 points. Now that I know, Sorry. now it's, you know, I'll never not get another perfect score. Well, so what we're going to have to do is um, I really like it. I'm looking at it now. I like it because it makes it more universal, so you can do yoga, you can do strength training, you can do whatever yeah. else, and then it, and then it – It kind of uh, universalizes the points, uh, in other words. Um, So what we'll have to do next time is increase the calories that we're trying to burn. Dude, yeah, we'll do that. I'm like (laughs) obliterated. I've been sleeping fantastic, though. Yeah, yeah. Dude, Um, and anyone who uh, Gunther just said he has an Apple Watch he doesn't even wear. So I had the same thing going on, and then um, I went and updated. I got the new guy. So I've been wearing it Ooh. every day and like using it for my sleep, and I'm I've been using it properly. The old one would fucking die, and it would kind of piss me off. Um, it was just old; it was old and shitty. So I got a new one. And I'm like, dude, this thing is awesome. Yeah, um, I wonder how many people we can add to it because I really like this. It does all the recording and the tracking for you, yeah. and like I said, it universalizes the workouts. I really like that. So if any of the if any of the guys have it, I wonder if they could hop on there. Yeah, and again, if you're if you're Droid Nation, Fitbits are also a good move too. Just grab them. I it doesn't really matter in my opinion which one you're using. It's just like you were saying, Wes. When you have your friends and you're hitting those little notifications, they're working out. It just, dude. It there's nothing in this world that works better for me than motivating oh, yeah. me to work out. Like I, no, have, I, never I agree. tried to, I've never tried a personal trainer. I'm sure that works, but it's like, dude, you strap one of these things on and just. Again, I start getting my note. Last night, I thought you didn't. I was like, because it was late. And I'm like, oh, I don't think Wes fucking finished his shit. And I was like, oh, my God. Woke up this morning <laughs> dismayed to see that you have completed all your workouts. I was like, fuck. Well, to be fair, I've got an advantage, which is I go second because you're three hours ahead of me. So I can view at the end of the night 
which I did last night. <laughs> I, like, literally, I stayed up an extra half hour. I'm like, fuck this. I'm not going to bed until I get Yeah, yeah there's no way. Yeah. No, I've, I've been, I've been definitely going to bed and, and it's cool. Like you've talked about it this week, like seeing exactly where your limits are. And for the, I was kind of negating the physical fitness stuff for a few weeks. And I mm. now, you know, have been at the point where I'm like, all right, this is exactly like my limit right now. And you know, it'll, that always kind of, that'll grow obviously as I keep kind of working out. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely at my physical fitness edge right now, which feels good. It feels good to be like that tired oh, yeah. and like fucking sleeping that well. And like, I know next week I'll tone it down a little, let myself recover. And then I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing another challenge and like ramping it up a little because it's been tight. Like another challenge next week? No, I'm going to take this next week and just do some recoup. So cool. I'm in the middle of a push up challenge too. So I'm, I've been doing like 130 push ups a day for like, I don't know, I guess a month now, whenever that started. Wow, 130. Yeah, and what stinks is I use my, well, it, every week it goes up by 10. So this week coming Ooh. up will be 140, then it'll be 150, and you know no one's tapped yet. So we're, I'm, once we get up into the 200 a day, that's when pe- I think people are about to uh, people are about to start tapping. But it's me and my cousins too, so it's hard. Who's you know, in it? Uh, me, Hoss, my cousin Bob, and my cousin Georgie. Okay, Pat's on it. No, Pat has a bum elbow right now. Oh yeah, no, I can understand that. Yeah, you know it would be a nice challenge, uh, dip challenge. I love dips. That'd be tight too. Dips are, are legit. Yeah, that'd be tight. I would do that. Yeah. Hell yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I think the challenges, uh, for me at least, are just so motivational um, because they're very primal. Like, I don't have to think about, yeah, I see that fucking notification come up. I'm like, oh, God damn it. And I then I try to immediately get something else done. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's been cool, too, because I'll finish. I'll close all my rings and I'll get my 600 points. And then I got to do my push-ups afterwards. And I'm like, God fucking damn it. But the the thing that I was thinking of proposing would, you know, and I'm trying to think how we would do this. And I, I think logistically, the idea basically is Romas Olympics. And you can pick any oh, event, oh, oh, oh. but you have to video yourself. So you can go for the most single push-ups, most single dips, most single pull-ups, but it has to be on cam. And you oh. can toss it up and then we can have records and shit. It'd be pretty fun. That would Obviously, be fun. I am so good. down for that. So, yeah, I, I think that'd be pretty sick. I mean, we, okay. there's some, we do need to do a retreat at one point. But we could do a, all this. Um, you can do this with just like having like a, a camera. And just being like, yeah. here's me doing, you know, 70 push-ups nonstop. I'm 100%. Can someone, in. 70, can someone do 75? So that'd be pretty sick. Oh, okay. All right. I'm in. All 100%. Right. Nice. Yeah, it's Romas Olympics, dude. And then, there, I mean, there could be running. There could be running times. So you can send your running time. It's pretty tight. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fine. I'm in. Nice. I'm gonna attempt. I'm gonna attempt the dips. You're gonna go for the dip record. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna hit the gym. Yeah. <laughs> Special. <laughs> 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 <That's it. laughs> but yeah, man. So you can think of literally anything else. Like people can, you know. You could do most free throws in a row. Anything. It could be any sort of category. All right, fine. Oh, Fair God. enough, man. Longest walk. Longest walk would be pretty nasty, too. Dude, walking is, uh, I'm convinced it's one of the best things that you can do. Um, I mean, it's so underrated. It's not glamorous. It doesn't have this, the optics as, you know, as running a marathon. But, man, I mean, it, it's been it's been one of those things that helps me clear my mind. Definitely helps burn some calories obviously low impact um it's it's just amazing it really is yeah man no i i agree it's uh for all those reasons and again it's like on days that you're like like when i felt like in the middle of the week i was like dude my body smashed and it's like well i'll, I'll go for a three mile like you can always go for a walk and eat burn the calories get the exercise and yeah, like you were saying it's like it just clears your mind and you can kind of process ideas it's it, like uh kind of just gets your mind it almost like moves ideas kind of through your mind mm. like when oh, my, yeah. if my dogs have to take a dump i have to take them for a long walk and it just like makes their intestines work i feel like mm. it does i mean it does it for us too <laughs> take a nice dump but, <laughs> but yeah man and, and i got a comment i saw uh gunther's comment uh he said west do 45 plate ad for dips um you won't beat me i for sure won't beat you um gunther how many plates do you do for for dips because I used to do those. Matt and I used to do those in college. Yeah. I still love them. So my record is three plates for, I think, seven dips. 
Um, but I haven't done that at all in a long time. So my strategy now for weightlifting, because I'm doing, um, I'm going to do another competition, um, is definitely more efficient weights. So not trying to go as heavy as possible, but just trying to focus as heavily uh, or as con as best I can concentrate on the muscle that I'm trying to work. So weirdly enough, as crazy as this sounds, um, using the least amount of weight that is effective. Um, but heavy dips are amazing. So he says he does 145 pound plate 12, 15 times. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that's nuts. Awesome, dude. Um, cool. Yeah. And that'll just be a category, you know, will be, you'll have your power lifter categories. You'll have your, you know, people going for volume, body weight. This, this will be tight. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Cool. I might do the ab wheel too. For those of you who don't have an ab wheel, you got to get the ab wheel. I, I'm convinced the ab wheel is the single best piece of equipment ever. Yeah, I'm about to, I'm gonna order one of those today. I like had, it's just I had one here. It was like a cheapo though. Yeah, just the it's um, just all things considered, right? You can travel with it. You can take it apart. You can put it in your bag very easily, and it just works on your core, arms, back, a tiny bit, and so on. Um, it obviously doesn't replace the gym clearly, but it's just I, I it's the best twelve but dollars or twenty dollars you'll ever spend. For sure. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh... I mean, I'm throwing down the gauntlet as soon as we get done this. I'm going to try to bust. I'm going to I'm gonna go for 100 push-ups, but, you know, we'll see how much I get. Hell yeah. So I'm going to throw down the gauntlet on the push-ups today. So it'll be tight. Nice, man. Cool. Well, yeah, I want to see maybe if we can bring up one of the dogs, see what's going on. If anybody's dealing with any obstacles or wants to share a win. Oh, dude, sorry. Sorry. Okay, Please so do. progress on my projects. I submitted the script to compliance for the finance video, which was major. I haven't made any progress on the university yet and had a killer week um brought in a lot of business so last week we did two million dollars in uh, assets this week we'll probably do about a million dollars in assets so we're crushing it on the business front i don't want you guys to think i'm just like sleeping um and then uh the scorecard i got a plus a plus a a and a so far and my score so far this week uh as of Friday, I've got 45 points total so far for the scorecard. So, nice. fucking sleep, man. That's what's killing me. Sleep. I, I, zeros on every single day except for one. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny because I, I, so I got the, and I, you know, anyone tossing your stuff if you knock some stuff out if you did not do it. Um, but I, my main goal this week was to finish editing Psychnol, which will be done today. Hell yeah. Um, so that was pretty, that was like my main goal, that, and I, I'm going to try to squeak out a couple other things. So that, I'm on par for that. I've gotten as many workouts as I wanted. So this week was a success, all in all. The scorecard, I, I was doing Monday, Tuesday. I fell off Wednesday, and then I just never filled it back out. However, my sleep has been eight hours, every, oh, it's like seven, and seven hours, seven hours, 45 minutes every night. Yeah. I've been yeah, killing, I, I I've need been to get back to sleep. that. That's a big deal. And it's I a will huge say, deal. From using the um, the thing you showed me, Wes, I think it was like the auto sleep, that app. I've been getting, ever since I started exercising like this and doing yoga again, my deep sleep has gone from like one hour and 40 minutes a night to like two hours and 53 minutes. So that's oh, really? crazy. That's insane what working, like working out and specifically, again, uh, getting back into yoga, like doing it like four or five days a week. That's been, that's been huge for me. Hell yeah. Yeah, I love yoga, man. Um, yeah, I need to get, I definitely need to get back to sleep. There's, there's no doubt about it. Um, I'll make sure I catch up this weekend. Definitely. Yeah, man. Now the scorecard's cool. my challenge. I always, I'm like doing the stuff and I, I go to open the Excel thing. I'm like allergic to Excel. I go to open it. And I'm like, I'll do it in a second. And it just, I forget. Yeah, no, I get it, buddy. I get it. Cool. Yeah. Let's see if we can bring somebody on a chat who wants to come on or Matt, if you want to grab somebody. Yeah. Let um, me, uh. Let's see, uh, let's get an old, an old goodie. I would love for Kaizen to come at some, uh, Kaizen to come on at some point to teach the PUA stuff to the dogs. We've got, we've got somebody going on a date tonight. I won't disclose his name. Actually, well, he won't mind. Jake is going on a date tonight. And, uh, Damn. yeah. And this, this topic keeps on coming up. <gasps> oh, Troy. Troy. Yes. Troy. What's up, bro? It's been a minute. In true form. Oh, you're muted, muted my brother. friend. <laughs> or maybe he's speaking in Japanese and it's like those delayed, like, uh, yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. 
How are you guys doing? Good, man. What are you up to? Uh, just been working a lot at the beach. Um, I uh, work as a supervisor at one of the beaches uh, at like surrounding Lake Michigan. Don't want to dox myself, but uh, yeah, it's been a lot. It's been really busy. A lot of changes have been going on since I haven't worked. I didn't work there last year, so a lot of stuff is different. So I'm catching up with all that. Um, and I actually had to run training. I uh, was one of two people that was running the training of the new kids the new guards that come in so it's basically we treat it as like boot camp-esque where i'm just like yelling at yelling at kids just like making them do a bunch of push-ups and it's like you it's like do these push-ups let me see your smiling faces rookies <laughs> and just like it's like oh it's it was so much fun but it destroyed me i um i'm just now getting back on track with like all my good habits of like regular meditation yoga exercise eating right because yeah for i like dropped down to like 164 just because i wasn't able to eat until like 6 p.m and like i know i think wes you don't eat until like late late in the day but like i was also like doing a bunch of exercise and like it was yeah. 90 degree heat and then going into the class like they had to do classroom work for a while and then do more exercise that i had to do with them so it was a bunch of running push-ups sit-ups squats burpees there was just so Ooh. much it was great it was great physically <clears throat> but i just destroyed myself in the mm. process damn yeah yeah you can't you can't go too far if you redline yourself consistently right there's you, you can't rejuvenate and so on and uh ray is calling he raised calling he said ab check now oh, it's and bad i've been eating badly i i had my first beer Let's like do a it, few man. days god damn it uh, god damn it oh man. nice man no, I've been oh, yeah. for what I should be. I was like, I was close to 160. That was my goal to get to um, before I started bulking back up. But now I'm at 170 again, just because like I was tired. I've been working a lot, so I just ate a bunch of a bunch of stuff as much as I could to feel back up and feel normal. But yeah, feeling better now. Feeling That's like cool. I'm actually in like a more con like this is like the first. This is the end of the week of like my f like a like the stuff I've been actually like doing, it's like a more consistent habit. I'm having a lot more, uh, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> sorry. It's been a while since I've spoke, spoken on this, get all nervous. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. It happens, bro. Oh, Jesus. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, I just have a more consistent schedule. I, cause on my days off, I babysit and also do landscaping. So I don't really have actual days off. I just have times when I'm not working for the most part or, or when I could get a sub just to, like take a shift to, so i have a day off but now that i'm in like a consistent schedule it feels like i'm actually getting getting my shit together and things are good though my career is now good because before i wasn't i was working maybe like 10 hours a week at my old job now i'm working 40 plus hours a week it's been great well, fucking here's, right here's, man. here's a question i got the because mm. you're busy now what's the uh what was your was your long term plan still to go to japan or what what's the uh yeah that's what that's what i'm doing in march <clears throat> this is Damn, so giving me money. Up. Yeah, That's this awesome. is money. Yeah, I'm, I've saved I now fourteen hundred dollars for Japan of five thousand that I need. I have the rest awesome. of the summer, and like I'm putting some of like I'm not even putting. If I didn't have credit card debt to put, pay off, I'd be putting a lot more. But once that's all paid off, all that stuff is done. It'll all, it'll all be be done by the summer. I'll be good. I'm. Um, awesome. It's been good. Things have been on track for the most part. Just oh, getting my getting my regular habits back in back in check has been the issue because like it's not like the same. I don't start at the same time every day, so I just have to like make sure I like work around that now. So yeah. working, so I'm re I'm reformatting everything because some days I'll start at one thirty, some days I'll start at seven forty five. So I just have to make sure I get that in check. No, I hear you. That that's like a little subtle problem that, that I uh, totally understand. It's like it's hard to like you have your routine, then you have to start piecemealing it back together. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I would love to to when you achieve that trophy of five grand, man, post it up on the Discord and, and come on back on the show because that's a huge win. Yeah, I'm using those Capital One um, accounts that you talked about. Fucking yeah, right. yeah, I had a bunch for like family vacation, wedding stuff that's like far, far off in the future, but I'm focusing all my money into money for Japan, five thousand. That's what I need. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I like that approach. I, I kind of toggle between the two. Like if I don't have a very decent, let's say, um, bigger goal, like the Tesla or something like that, then I'll, I'll spread my money out proportionally every single week. 
But if I've got a big goal and it's like, I'm going to focus all of my resources on that just because you get that win quicker and it just feels better. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. James. <laughs> awesome, nice, man. man. Congratulations, dude. And the ab yeah. check, dude, you, you fucking crushed it, man. I bet I actually did work out well yesterday, so I'm definitely feeling that. I'm definitely having that pump, but getting back into all the stuff i getting my i'm moving all my workout stuff to the beach because ev- that's one good thing about it every guy it's like a bunch of like ju like not juice heads no one's doing steroids supposedly um but uh there's just a bunch of dudes that are just like getting they're trying to be like mid-20s trying to get big and everything it's very fun i've actually been um trying to they like they'll ask me for pointers and stuff a lot of these kids like the ones that are actual guards are like 16 17 years old so they'll like they'll look up to me if for a lot of things that's been really fun i actually been showing them a wim hof meditation and that's been that's been a that's fun experience cool. yeah getting these kids... wizard. they must think you're a wizard dude. they think i'm oh, a weirdo. Absolutely. they think i'm an actual i'm a complete psycho because they were like because at first they thought i was scary i'm like bald head screaming at these kids <laughs> um but then they look down i'm wearing toe shoes and they're just like, <laughs> a- apparently that was a thing. They were like, oh, I thought he was intimidating. Then I saw his shoes. <laughs> so it was, it's been a fun time though. I'm very, I've like, not just being like a full on boss. I'm very personal with them. It's been a fun time trying to be like more mentory, like using a lot of things from this group, like being positive w- with everything. It's That's been very good. Yeah. It's and, worked and out. What you, in my opinion, what you are illustrating is practitioner before philosopher. The amount of people who want to sit in and try to think about leadership and think about this or read a book about X, Y, and Z versus going out and doing projects in those areas is exactly what you should be doing. That's what you should be doing. And then you can go and read a book about it or you can talk philosophy about it. But you cannot talk philosophy, in my opinion. You have not earned the right to talk philosophy until you've actually fucking done the things that you're philosophizing about, if that makes sense. So, like, you're learning leadership with these kids right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been it's been a very good, like, learning. It's been a really good teaching moment for myself as I'm teaching these kids, like, seeing what works, seeing, like, the limits of where I can push them um when i have to be sympathetic with them when i have to be like come on i've taught you this like four goddamn times like just like and knowing when to be yeah just knowing how to do things and like i remember like every year i've i've worked there for like seven years now this is my yeah it's my seventh year on and off and like i feel like i wasn't really absorbing as much as i as i am now now that Mm -hmm. like this group has taught me to take things as like everything's a a lesson to be learned from so yeah like, and, and, and troy maybe you can oh, i'm sorry but did i cut you off no 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 go ahead uh, maybe you can appreciate this because i when i was in high school my basketball coach was just a really big jerk just an incredibly large jerk to the point where everyone on the team just checked out it, like, like literally because every single time somebody messed up, which is going to be very often in a sport, right? You're not going to hit every shot. He'd freak out. And it very quickly unmotivated all of us. Um, mm. To the point, literally, like, like literally, we were the best team in the league. We were undefeated. We won 14 games straight. And eventually it hit a peak where it's like we couldn't make this dude happy. He just screamed at us to the point where I think we lost three or four games straight after that. Like it was, it was very – it was a really cool study actually. Um, and I could tell you, I love learning from a computer now and Excel and all these things because the computer doesn't yell back at me, right? Like I'm allowed to make mistakes because I'm human without any, like, I don't get the result, which that is feedback loop enough for me, right? Without the extra, oh my gosh, you suck. What are you doing? Like you piece of garbage, like, like the military type of thing. And don't get me wrong. It's hard for me because that's how I do want to lead sometimes, but I'd be curious to see what would happen if you were more like that or maybe tested it out on a couple kids. Like even if they get it wrong 50 times in a row, if you know their intention is to get it right, right? Like gently guiding them back saying, no, you just did this. You just did this. You just did this wrong. Because oftentimes for physical things, it's not a, it's not an intellectual misunderstanding, right? It's like there's something like 
it's hard to adopt a, a proper basketball shot. I mean, it takes you a, a decade to get a proper basketball shot. It's not that you don't understand how to do it. It's just like getting the physical mechanics down from repetition, repetition, repetition. But if you have somebody there screaming at you every time, it's like, well, fuck this thing, man. You know, so I'd be curious to see what happened if you tried a gentle approach, basically, and didn't give up on that gentle approach. So I think the benefit is that when we're teaching things directly, we're not yelling at they're in a classroom setting that's very mm -hmm. like we tell them and they could ask as many questions as they want. Our boss has been doing it for like twenty five years. Awesome. And he's he knows everything about this. He knows exactly how to teach this. He know like he does it like it's like a stand up special. I've seen him do this act so many times. <laughs> and he does it, he hits the exact beats. It's so funny now to see yep. it. But um yep. but he we do it then and the only time like it's only during that the two week training that we did that they get that extreme yelling mm. um and stuff and they're not being they're not learning new things they're just being tested on what they should know mm. and it's not like we're in the middle of them doing it they're not being told to answer the questions we'll like take a pause all right now answer this you don't answer mm. it correctly five more push-ups and then another person gets the, the opportunity to do to like do it and everything i feel like We've we've gotten it down pretty well, and I think. But now that it's not the the rookie training, we're not doing the the first couple of weeks of training. It's a lot more relaxed, and I think we do go over things a lot more sympathetically. Cool. So, awesome. Yeah. yeah Kai, Kai Zen said Phil Jackson style. Um, yeah, Phil, I completely get Phil Jackson and John Wooden. Those are two very, very, very famous and successful coaches. Arguably, some of the most successful coaches of all time. And I think both of them basically had the philosophy of the only reason they were on the floor during the games was because like the organizations forced them to, mm -hmm. if they had their way, they wouldn't say anything during the games. They don't yell. They don't do anything like that. Just very, very Zen. I will say also, um, so Figgy does make a point. So Figgy has worked at the beach too. Um, we, um, the reason why we do all the yelling and stuff, it's to acclimate them to the fact that they're in like high pressure, like mm. life or death situations and like a lot of weird shit especially people are now out and about this has been one of the more hectic years like i feel like in certain time in certain ways like a lot of people are just like a lot of crazies are out it's been wild mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of people yelling at people a lot of people accusing people of other things it's been interesting it's it always happens every year but it's just a fun time interesting yeah, yeah. and ray wants to know if you've if you've met any potential mrs troy's on the beach I'm actually been dating a girl um, that's not from the beach or anything. Um, yeah, You're hiding this from us. <laughs> it's been popping around in the Discord. Yeah, she's, I keep, she's I keep my little sweetheart. Yeah, mm. little 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 hop, a little girl, little half Asian, little little baby girl. I nice. Was if, I was wondering if she was going to ground Air Japan. If she was going to take ground that. Nah, plane. So <laughs> here's the thing: her parents, her parents, um, her dad uh, worked in Japan, and her mom eventually moved out there to meet up meet up with them, and they got married then. Ooh. So it's 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 a story made in in a fairy tale or something in her her mind definitely I'm more just like all right we'll see how this goes because like, <laughs> yeah, like I've known yeah. her for I've actually known her for quite a while so I'm still gotcha, like feeling gotcha. things out we're still like getting to know each other in like a deeper way we've known each other since high school but yeah it's been very interesting it's been nice it's been nice though Hell yeah can't complain that's what's cool saying. awesome dude you and last question do you go on dates in those toe shoes dude hell no she would never allow it she would never <laughs> allow it but um i will say as oh it's asb perfect timing to say that yeah bays will make you eat horribly it he was talking about it earlier oh, yeah. it's yeah, it's been a problem yeah so yeah it's the gotta, witch, witch in the candy house dude it dude, seriously is you got you gotta <laughs> own it you gotta own it if you don't like i have found that if you don't get on that train very quickly so much momentum gets behind behind that where every time you go on a date or something it's just like fucking candy land you got it you got to nip it in the bud real quick man red velvet yeah. french toast is good though oh it's so oh, good <laughs> heard of that yeah Dance. oh man it's an, yeah but yeah things been good i'll uh check out though thanks thanks y'all all, all right, right brother later troy peace damn man dude uh, before we grab i think we'll grab kaizen if he can come the uh so you were saying i think last week it was or monday i forget exactly when it was um, how our ancestors were very much not nice most of the time, to like you know, in order to like get us here. And I was reading a thing yesterday. Do you remember what I remember I was talking about? Oh, oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. So I'm reading, I'm reading a thing 
uh, last night, and they were talking about how there was a period in human history, or maybe it was like, you know, pre-human history when we were like weren't fully like you know Homo erectus or whatever yet, mm-hmm. but there was like a six hundred thousand year archaeologists think there's a six hundred thousand year period where like human being mothers would just eat their babies, <laughs> like that's how wicked the shit goes. You know, it's pretty insane. Um, so yeah, I, I read that last night and I was like, Jesus Christ. Oh, so again, if you're ever looking for something to, uh, pump yourself up on your modern existence, it's like, there's one. Oh yeah. Did you ever read the book, uh, Sapiens by any chance? Uh, Sapi- yes, I did. That was what Yuval <laughs> Harari did. I, I didn't read Guns, Germs, and Steel, but I read Sapiens. Yeah, I, I think I could be wrong, but I think it's in Sapiens where they talk about there was a researcher who went out with some tribe because they haven't adopted any new technology, nothing like that. It's just as tribal i think as the world currently has like the most tribal and i think he said they were on a walk some at some point and there was a guy in the back who just kept on lagging so the guy in the front walks back and kills him and then they keep on walking (laughs) right like you know and like like it was it was like a normal thing right this researcher obviously but then he talked to the tribes people and like oh yeah that's a you know that's a normal thing he was holding the group back but it's just very interesting. Yeah, like it's very Jeez interesting. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. So you better that Apple Watch, man. You better pay attention to it every day. You know. Oh, dude. I'm, um, yeah. So yeah, very, uh, just very interesting. And and obviously we've evolved a long way from that. But just knowing that, yeah, when you're in down times, knowing that your ancestors, you know, had to do some some pretty intense stuff, and you've got that in your DNA. Yeah, it's pretty wicked. And the thing that I've been thinking about, this is what I've been doing for the. Uh the final logo therapy video is, is thinking how we we're constantly evolving out of our current circumstances towards something new. So when people get all like disillusioned on, like it's really hot right now. And especially in entertainment to be like the world's ending shit sucks, blah, blah, blah. It's mm-hmm. over. Um, you know, it's like, I, I think people can find a lot of meaning in kind of transcending the current climate and like moving towards something else and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, Oh yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, if we get Kaizen, if he's available, that'd be awesome. I definitely want to get him on here at some point to to get yeah. teach us some of his PUA stuff. There's the bird. <clears throat> oh hell yeah! Shit, click the wrong button. There we go. Oh, and the uh, I gotta find someone asked what the book I was reading. I, I gotta find the title. It's uh, it's Joseph Campbell. It's a uh, he goes and goes through all the old mythologies from like very ancient all the way to modern and it's like a four book i think three or four book series so mm. it right now it's pretty tight but yeah let's uh because i would i would like oh. to crack the code um there he is oh there you go what up kaizen what up so yeah what, what's what's uh what's the matter at hand you're saying a young man's going on a date yes so i, I get this question a lot um, which is for the guys going on dates, what is the system or what is an infrastructure? What are the pillars that they can start to learn from? And I love having a guy like Kaizen on here because I do believe that a lot of the stuff is kind of overhyped. So you needed to go through a filter of somebody who's intelligent and who's also respectful. Does that make sense, guys? And like, you know, of somebody who can say like, no, don't do all that garbage. Because I know that in the business world, that exists a lot. Like there's a lot of business books out there that tell you to do complete garbage, but it sounds really good. So you need it to filter through somebody who has the same moral uh, code and value systems that you do. So yeah, we, I would love for you to teach the dudes, you know, some some things that you think um, can really help move the needle for these guys trying to find dates and so on. Yeah. Um, when they were talking about that, especially if, if anybody – like in the chat or any of the other dogs are about to go on a date. One thing I've noticed that made a big difference of going out and being able to actually connect with people is it's really simple. Like if you're going out to eat or you're going like that, we'll just say going out to eat a big mistake that most people make. And it's really subtle is they'll sit on the opposite side of the table Mm. and eat instead of sitting right next to somebody. That's just a small shift that you can make when you go out that makes a world of difference in actually connecting to somebody because I don't I don't know what it is about doing that. Maybe it's that you're more of an intimate kind of setting. You're changing the dynamic from an interview where I feel like if you're sitting across from somebody, it's more interview style. You're like, what do you do? Where do you go? Like that versus when you, it's 
takes you back to like when you're at the lunchroom table when you're a kid and you sat with your friends when you were sitting around that way it wasn't like a formal situation where it's like sitting next to somebody you're a lot more like i feel comfortable doing something mm. like that are you talking now, about like sorry Wes? you talking like yeah. same side or like yeah eat two like, corners same side yeah so like if you go I to like a booth i same side in the same side of the booth as that person i do it all the time with my girlfriend like such a power sit next movie. to her when we go out and stuff like like it's it's weird not to at this point because mm. Again, it feels like you're interviewing somebody when you're sitting across from them like that. I just lap it, but I take top position always, first date, constantly. What's top um, position? When you sit on somebody's lap on the top position. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you do you, now, uh, Kaizen? Would you recommend? Let's say it's a square table, because kind of what Matt was hitting on. First date, would you recommend cornering it? Like you sit on one corner, she sits on the next corner, so you're closer. You're not in opposition, or do you literally recommend like? same side would they come off would they think like hey this is like like a, a little too close proximity or what's your call on that well you say you get like a oh, she's this card this is yeah. your table normally yeah. they'll have they're like if it's a four person table to be one here one here one here one here i just sit on the same side as that person okay so, so most, you, yeah most places you go to they'll have that kind of set up got it okay perfect pretty sick so have okay. you ever encountered any like, dude, what the fuck? Why are you on my side? Or just like, what's up? It's it's only weird if you make it weird. Mm -hmm. This is uh, this is a really really deep concept. If you get into it and you start overthinking it, but it plays out universally in not just like dating, but sales and a bunch of other stuff. Whatever you feel, they feel. So if you go in thinking this is this is weird, I'm acting weird, they're acting weird, they'll feel that from you because. Especially like if you're dating a girl, they have a lot more acute sense of picking up on that little subtle uh, energies or vibes or whatever you want to call it. So if you feel comfortable about doing something like that and you act like you've been doing it forever, they'll feel that, oh, this guy's comfortable doing with whatever he wants or sitting like this or being next to me. That He's probably done this a million times kind of thing versus if you're acting like oh i don't i don't know is she gonna like it if you're like seeking approval it's gonna come off as weird versus if you're just going out and doing it like you always do like it's just normal it's mm. gonna come off a little bit more positive i would say in the end no yeah. I, I think that's pretty sick man any yeah. power any kind of overt power <laughs> move like that kind of rules and you know and if somebody were to be like i don't know like like i think what you're saying kind of points to the fact where it's like like, if, if you are dangling on such a delicate edge that, like, choosing the wrong side would be your ultimate downfall of this and that, you're already kind of in a losing mentality. Where it's like, just go out exactly. and have fun. Just go out and have fun. Exactly. And be like, yeah, I don't want it to feel like a fucking job interview. Let's just chill. Yeah, you're... As, as, I mean, we've talked about it before. You're adding to the fun. You're adding to the party. And that, like I said, it can be in a dating situation. It can be hanging out with your friends or whatever. You're not looking to get something from somebody else. You're looking to give positive energy, positive vibes, whatever, being comfortable, which, I mean, that's why a lot of people have to go out and get trashed at the bars and stuff. It's just so they can maybe sometimes feel comfortable. And if you can mm. just do that all the time, that's invaluable in itself. True. Well, so if you had to, if you, let's say somebody started from scratch. Right, a guy is listening to this and says, uh, "Well, I'm not good with girls. Like, how could you could you give him a framework at least to start from, or like, what would you do? Let's say you didn't have a girlfriend, blah blah blah, et cetera. What would be your methodology of getting, let's say, your first date or first several dates? <clears throat> it's actually something I'm focusing on right now, to an extent, and I think anybody can do it. Is practice small talk." But j literally just talking to everybody all the time, even if it's just small talk. Like if you're in an elevator with somebody, if you're in line somewhere at like uh, the bank or you're getting food somewhere or I mean, literally whatever. There's You're always, for the most part, unless you live in like the middle of the country where you're not by anybody, more than likely you're going to be in places where you can have human interaction. And the more you just do that, the more you get comfortable with it. And at a certain point, you're just like, well, I talk to everybody all the time. 
Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't be a big deal for you to talk to somebody. And then you kind of progress that into, well, it's not a big deal to talk to that person. Well, it's not a big deal to get their contact info. Well, it's not a big deal to get this person's phone number. And then you build up that. You start texting people. You can set up dates if that's what you want to do. You can set up hangouts or events or, I mean, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Mm. So I wanna, That's awesome. Sorry, go ahead, Wes. Oh, yeah. No, I completely agree. So obviously, I'm going to break this down because that's just what my stupid brain does. Um, so what I'm hearing is stop trying to take such long leaps in like, let's say the romantic escalation process because they're too far. And I think a lot of those books kind of say that like, Oh, just go like, you know, it gives you this idea of you're going to get her number within the first 10 seconds. It's like, well, Hey, you don't even have the skill set yet of being comfortable around interacting with humans. So do that at volume. And then you take the next little inch forward. And then all of a sudden you're making yourself into the type of person that is attracting that and giving out value and just enough volume will breed enough activity for you and activity will breed results. Is, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Yeah. You're building momentum and whatever it is that you do. So it, like if you are building momentum and talking to people, you get, it's like when you work out, if you do curls every day, eventually the 20 pound curl that you're doing feels like nothing. So you can move up to heavier weights. If mm. you're getting, comfortable talking to people all the time eventually that it's nothing to you and you can do whatever else maybe you can get a phone number maybe you can go on an instant date right then and there or something it just depends on where you're at and whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish yeah yeah and i feel like you know at the end of it it's almost and it i think this might not be you know what people want to hear sometimes but it's like i think Wes kind of said this it's almost like step five it's like just work on not feeling like horrible and clammy and nervous and like like oh, i'm not like start just doing just start doing interesting things and then like you parlay that into conversation rather than like if i was sitting all day not really doing anything and i'm like oh i, I want to have sex with that girl and i'm like hi they're like ah what the fuck are you doing get out of here it, you know yeah you're, they kind of can feel your agendized nature um but yeah i really think a lot of this does start with kind of what you're saying like you know start doing some interesting things get out there like anything you're interested in just get into that and then just if you're around people within a context you're interested like you know interested in uh yeah. stuff kind of parlays from there rather than just trying to come out like Wes is saying like just come out cold into the world like all right it's time to find a mate <laughs> it's like you know, <laughs> it's part yeah, of like so many other things that's the thing that girls will talk about a lot too is if somebody's passionate about something they find that attractive you can Hell be passionate yeah. about literally anything if it if you're like super into trains or you're super into like old cars from the fifties or, you know, hot rods or whatever, whatever it is. And you talk about it with passion and emphasis that just shows that you have that whatever about you that you can kind of convey that. And that conveyance of what you're expressing, you're passionate about, like I said, whatever you feel they're going to feel. And if you're passionate about this area that more than likely it's like a signifier that you have this in line, this in line, this in line, and you're able to express yourself comfortably. And then if you just can do that in more and more situations, eventually it's more than likely going to help you in a lot of different ways. It can help you with your job. It can help you with your relationships with family members, like you're dating, whatever it is. If you're just being passionate about what you like and having a cool life and not really wanting to get, somebody else's positive emotion you're giving that out yourself yep that's it, i mean it can only help you to do that yep. yeah so what, what i hear there and just so if this can help connect the dots for somebody because it's helping connect me connect the dots so it seems like females are looking for security if you look through evolution it seems like that's one of the things that they're looking for and are we in agreement on that they're looking for protection security etc at least every book that i've read on this topic and even from the robert sapolsky course in stanford on evolutionary biology he talks about it at length as well so then because that's the nucleus, then when you talk about things that you're passionate about and so on, it usually signifies um, some sort of ambition, like forward progress. Oh, he ha- applies energy towards this thing and he goes deep into that thing. And a guy's in a completely group. You said that can be extrapolated to other areas of life. 
if he's mm-hmm. after it here, he's after it. Chances are in other areas, and and definitely in contrast to the dude I went on a date with last night, who's not up to anything, right? Just wants to drink beer. Like that's, I'm sure there's some sort of calculation there subconsciously. Um, I think it's great for guys to hear that you do not have to be the millionaire. You don't have to be the dude with six pack abs. All you have to be is the person in pursuit of those things or insert whatever those are. It's the ambition in my opinion that I have noticed is attractive. Not necessarily that you're at a destination because conversely out here in Southern California, I have talked to women who are dating the guys who are already at the destination and they very quickly end the relationships because the guy's no longer making progress. Where it, it's progress that is the attractive thing, at least from from my experience. Because is that something you would agree with or poke holes in? Yeah, yeah. The, I would kind of add to that. Um, being too predictable can also be boring to somebody. Because I mean, it, it would be like if you ate the same food every day, eventually you would mm-hmm. get sick of it. If you're dating somebody and they do the same routine, bullshit, whatever, and, and it's not exciting. Eventually, it's going to get old, and they'll be like, okay, well, this relationship is going nowhere. So you kind of have to constantly be going after it. Like, that ambition, I mean, you think about, like, dudes that are, like, trapping or selling drugs or whatever. Those guys will have no issue finding certain types of girls that are, whatever reason, they're just into that kind of stuff. And what that is a signifier of is the ability to go and get resources. So... Mm -hmm. Resources could be money, resources could be like housing, security, whatever it is. If you have that ability to go and get more resources than the guy that's sitting on his ass and not really passionate about anything, then that's attractive in itself. And that just mm-hmm. shows that, all right, if this girl likes that guy and she has a kid with him, he's got the ability to get enough resources to take care of them and the kid. Yep, 100%. I've also heard this has been a common theme, and we look, we watched this on the scorecard meeting this morning, which is uh, women are attracted to successful risk takers. So can you articulate that in your dates or in your dating profile, et cetera, that would display that you've successfully taken risks in the past? Yeah, the risk taking, there's, a, you can look up, I forget where I've heard it before, but there's short term dating strategy and long-term dating strategy Mm. um the short term is more of the risk taking behavior so if somebody's more likely to take higher and higher risks more than likely they're working more in the short term dating strategy Mm. if somebody is playing it safe like they're not they're buying bonds versus stocks Mm -hmm. that's just an example that's more of a long-term dating strategy that's not as attractive for whatever reason and that kind of goes into the um, pre-selection terminology. If somebody has had, like for a guy, if you've had a bunch of different girlfriends, for a girl to see that this guy's been on X amount of dates, that already means to them, like this many girls have already checked off or approved it. It's like if you go to the store and you're looking for a pop, more than like you're not going to buy like Walgreens brand you'll buy coca-cola because Mm -hmm. so many other people have already kind of checked off on that and approved it Mm -hmm. now would you would you go go dating dating? online profile style or you you keeping this more primal and historical of like in person like what what is your strategy there you gotta diversify your portfolio (laughs) (laughs) if you're going out picking up talking to people at starbucks Okay, it's like if you were picking up a dollar every time you went somewhere and you could also have an internet marketing funnel that was sending you money. Mm. Would you be like, no, I don't want the money from online. I only want to make sales selling cars at my car lot. No. You, I mean, it's going to build that skill, especially if you're like just starting out. Maybe if you have such an abundance that you're like, you know, I don't want to deal with XYZ type of person that I know that this type of dating profile usually has okay but a lot of people aren't there yet if that's where you're at you need to kind of just go out have a bunch of different experiences so you can figure out what you do like and then you can narrow down okay from these people that i've met this way i kind of like these people a little bit 
more because of whatever or if i've found profiles online i like people that kind of like show this in their profile a little bit more just having your own taste based on your experiences you can't kind of just all right i had one bad experience with this i will never do this again mm. kind of thing it, it all comes with like the more experience you get the more knowledge you have the more knowledge you have the better decisions you're able to make got it cool definitely <clears throat> yeah i like that and i i just again I, it really goes back to that original point like you were saying like if you're going out there like at a deficit kind of like needing to become kind of whole or kind of like i need this to work with almost like anybody it's mm -hmm. like yeah i always think of it it's like you're a you're like an unstopped bathtub there's like you're just sucking in resources and attention until you can kind of like self let's say self complete self soothe to some level where you're genuinely okay with yourself it makes going out in the relationship thing so much better because it, if you're like if you just like need another person it usually attracts some sort of other person who feels like that and that's where a lot of like toxic dynamics can come from and you can kind of skip a ton of headache if you just accept the fact that you like you know what i'm, I'm inherently okay you know, I have a goal of being in a relationship, but I'm not going to just like throw myself into the first thing that's available and just live out some fucking nightmare. Yeah. Well, and what do you guys think about the myth of, I personally think it's the myth of the Hail Mary. Like, oh, you don't talk to any level 10 girls ever. And then you see her at Whole Foods and you think you're going to like have this slick one liner and get her number. But I, Kaizen, what I hear you saying is increase your game in all ways and then start to add yourself to those groups of where you're talking to tens of level 10 females. And you might get one to drop out of the funnel, like if you do it the right way, but it's not just one conversation. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like if you put it in a sales terminology, if you're trying to sell a yacht and you only go and make one cold call to somebody that is able to buy a yacht, your success rate's not going to be that high versus if you're going to places where people buy yachts, you're talking mm -hmm. to a lot of different people that are able to buy yachts. I mean, your success rate's probably going to be higher. So just use common sense for the most part. Yeah. If you're not talking to anybody and you're, you're hoping that somebody's magically going to come along or you're hoping to be Spider-Man and have the spider one day come and bite you and give you superpowers, <laughs> that's not going to happen. I fantasize have to about that all the time. time. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. You're 100% right, man. It's like... You know, it really is just, it's like all the boring fundamentals and little steps that people don't want to hear. It's like, that's it, man. It's that, that's it. And it's a road yeah. of tiny and constant progress. And then, you know, before you know it, you're like, I can't believe I was even worried about this. But yeah. It takes a now, while. Now, how much risk, and Matt, I'm not sure if you were this one day, but um, and when I was in college, we, I had a friend and he was, he was studying PUA, like hardcore. Mm -hmm. And we were at this bar and everybody was sober. It was like in, in the beginning of, of the bar session and the waitress comes up and she's got these uh, Guinness beers on the ta on the tray. And she's like, would you guys like one? And what my buddy says, who, by the way, is not attractive at all. Right. Like, and, 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 but he was having a lot of success. So what he says is what else are you going to give me? Right. To which, to which I would have thought, like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> right? like, and he looks at her like straight in the eye. What else are you going to give me, right? And um, I thought that would have been like he would have been slapped in the face. She laughs in a kind of like a cute way. And then like, you know, they have somewhat of a pleasant interaction. I guess the point, the question I'm trying to ask is those types of things, how much of a social risk do you have to take? Because that, in my opinion, that's a pretty – a pretty long, like far out comment to make from relative to where, where they started. Do you want to get this? Well, what else are you going to give me? First interaction ever. So what, what are your comments on that? That's like when people say they like confidence, not arrogance. Mm. The confidence comes from like um, when Barry Sanders would score a touchdown, he would just throw the ball like he'd been there a hundred times. If he's saying, what else do you got? He's kind of acting like, People give me stuff all the time. So, mm. I mean, this is nothing. You kind of, it, it's very <laughs> subtle and a lot yeah. of different things. But. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. Well, I think the, I think the reason a lot of this stuff had gotten kind of a, a bad rap because it was, it was almost like starting to be some sort of jet. It was like a, a male equivalent of stuffing your bra. 
like a dude, if a dude got home and a girl like had these like humongous boobs or, you know, whatever size you prefer. And then like she got home and you're like, they were artificial. Dudes would be like, that's bullshit. But, you know, if a guy goes out and kind of starts kind of like tweaking female psychology and, they, and then once, it, you know, once people eventually get to know one another and the girl's like, oh, you just tricked me, you motherfucker. So it's like, that's where I think it gets kind of a bad rap. And it's like, but I, I think what you're saying is like, yeah, like, you know, you, you, you'd be surprised what happens if you can kind of like confidently go out and just, you know, shoot the breeze. Mm-hmm. But I, I think there's an, another part of it too, of like, again, like be okay with yourself and eventually tra- attract the type of person you'll actually work out with. Mm-hmm. So. Just being the best you that you can be. If you're an engineer, be the best engineer that you can be. If you're a salesperson, just be the best salesperson that you can be. And always try to work on just giving value and whatever it is that you're doing or trying to accomplish. And most of the time, just doing that in itself will lead to positive interactions. Yeah. And I'd like to throw something else out there as well. I think oftentimes as guys, whether it be from the media or whatever it is, we tend to think of one particular female that we're trying to go after at the bar or whatever. And it's usually some version of like this hot, short skirted, blonde, you know, cleavage, all of that kind of stuff. I, I would argue that chances are you actually really don't want that stereotypical hot female. I mean, what are you guys, how do you guys feel about that comment? Right? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, like I have found those to be, Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Like the, in my experience, like a co-ed poster. Oh yeah, oh yeah, one hundred percent. Like one hundred percent. Like the ones that I thought I was supposed to be chasing after. I mean, once you kind of have enough experience in the game, like you, you, you end up being successful in that realm, and you very quickly learn that you might not want that at all because that comes with a whole bunch of other craziness. That you're like, wow, this is not workable. Yes, yeah, she's she's hot, but she's not necessarily beautiful in all ways. Like this is, do you know what I mean? Like there's a difference. I, I'll say this and this is from experience and like blood, sweat, tears experience. You want someone who's nice to you. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. Get someone who's nice. That's yeah. The only thing that matters. All the other yeah. stuff is bullshit. But yeah, you want someone who's nice and yeah, you don't, yeah, like, yeah, I know what you're saying. Like, like oh, she's an Eagles cheerleader. She's so high, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. man, you know, if you want to take that on. I mean, as you get older, that's something that kind of like, there's people I see now where I just go, oh, the problems and issues that, probably come with it i just go no no, thank you (laughs) oh yeah oh yeah yeah i think i think the barbie doll type of thing that we have all been trained as men in my opinion have been trained to like oh that's what's attractive i think that story is kind of full of holes at least that's what i have found it seems like you guys have maybe had similar experiences yeah Yeah, i mean like i said i think think it's one of those things man it's like you know just move toward, you know, be authentic and just see who that kind of brings around you. You can always, you know, this stuff is kind of, you know, you don't want to like under test the limits and assume that other people don't want to talk to you. So you just go out you test the limits. If it turns out that like a certain type of person doesn't want to talk to you, you say, okay, well, whatever. But like, I don't know, man, I feel like this is kind of one of the, it's one of the final frontiers people can kind of start taking like, like, it, you know, I guess it's slowly closing down too socially. Cause like now, like if you, there's a very, fine line between like like addressing people and talking to them versus like oh he's being a harasser versus blah 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 mm-hmm. um so yeah i i think i think again the most important thing is to develop yourself be okay with yourself and go out there looking to give and i, I feel like if you, you can't really go wrong got it love it yeah. cool guys then anything else you want to share brother that's it that was Just awesome man do it yeah, to the man. best of your ability oh Quick, quick poll. Oh, Dude yeah. <clears throat> All right. Let me Dude go. of the week. Who are some nominees? Kaizen, thank you so much, brother. Appreciate your time, dude. That was awesome. Yeah, I do appreciate that. Um, I'm going Kaizen, A Link, Paulson, Gonth. Do you have anyone else? Uh, no, those are great. Kaizen for awesome. He, all these guys are super consistent. Uh, Gunther, especially, um, Kaizen and then a link, uh, doing a great job of coming on the score t- scorecard meetings, um, every day this week, uh, back from the belly of the beast that he disclosed to us. Was that last week? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that's right. good. Oh 
shoot. There we go. It's up. She's up, dude. Kai's an A-Link gone. Also, the Troy boy. Gone through with his his weighted dips. So I added the Troy boy as well. Oh, yeah. Although I think I know how this is going to roll. A-Link's a force to be reckoned with. It's, t it's tough to stop him, man. Pretty sure. I'm looking at the numbers right now. I'm pretty sure he won. I don't think anyone... Yeah, A-Link won. All right. All Sweet. Troy just... All right, we're done. Troy snuck in the last... Because there was a final vote remaining, and Troy snuck it in. So we got A-Link. Right. A-Link is the winner. A-Link, dude of the week, congratulations, brother. And it's, it's, it's so awesome having you back on the team, man, and seeing you every morning on the scorecard team. Yeah, man. Great fucking job. Keep fighting. All right. Matt, thank you, brother. Have a great dude, weekend, dude. We'll start at the Olympics. You too, man. Everyone have a good weekend, and we'll, uh, we'll start throwing down the gauntlets in the Discord, in the fitness part of the Discord for who can do what. Run times, yes. all that stuff. That'd be pretty cool. fun. Good thing for you. All right, summer. dudes. All right, man. Later, buddy. Later.